Yes. Okay. So but with, as with, with genus and species, column. that's something to deal with when okay. they're all put together. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Yep. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to append to the plant label Senge table. And I want to do so from the occurrences for photos table. And I want the occurrence ID to be populated. I'm going the wrong direction, I'm sorry. Let me, let me reverse that, sorry. I want to append the occurrences for photos to the plant label single table. So that the occurrence ID from here yes. goes into the occurrence ID in the destination. Okay, so that plus the scientific name, plus the family, plus the latitude and the longitude and the elevation. Now these three have different names, so we have to find them. Lat number, long number, and out number. Okay. Now, if I do that, it won't allow me to do it. Because I'll be inserting a 1 where there's already a 1. And a 2 where there's already a 2. So I actually need to insert a, this value plus 278 into the occurrence ID. Shouldn't I just be able to add 278 and then the first one will be 279? Yeah. Okay. So that's what it'll look like if I paste it in. That's what's supposed to happen right now. Yes. Okay. Looks good? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll do it. Done. So now if we go and look at that table, which is this one, there are 293 records in it. And the last ones look like they have scientific names, but not genus and species. Latitudes and longitudes and elevations. So now all the data are together. They're all together. And now, because everything's together in one table, you can clean this all up at once. All as one, not five different spreadsheets. Okay. And test the data integrity, see that all the species are correct. Everything can be tested here together. But we don't want to forget the photos. Yes, that's what I want to ask. Good. We need the photos. Good. So to do that, let me clean up a little bit. Things I don't need. OK, cleaned up. New query. And what I want to do is change the photos table. And what I want to do in the photos table is I want to change the value of the occurrence ID to be the value of the occurrence ID plus 278. Two seventy eight. I'll do that. <coughs> it says I can't do it. The reason is that the field type is the wrong one. I can't add a string, it looks like, to a number. Let me try this. That says do it in the field, the value of the field rather than the words occurrence ID. Okay, seem to be happy about that. So now if I look at my photos table, 
Yes, they begin with 279 mm -hmm. and go to 293. Okay. So, my two tables are ready. I have photos linked to occurrences. Yes. And, the data. and all the IDs are associated with each other. So now it's a matter of cleaning up and making this new database with two tables in it have the data that you want it to have to clean it up. Yeah. So one of the cleanups <coughs> could be just remove all of those fields because they're not part of the photograph. It will not cause any problem? Well, it shouldn't. All these data have just been put into the occurrence table. Accepted. So we can do a query to convince ourselves of that. Okay. Okay. So it should be the case that if I look at the plant label Senge and the photos together, and that if I connect them by their occurrence IDs, because they're related by that, yeah. then I should see from the plant label side this family, this scientific name, that latitude, longitude, and altitude. Okay, That's from the occurrence table. Yes. And on the plant photos table, I should see this family, scientific name, latitude, longitude and elevation and I can look at them all at the same time and I compare I say yeah. family is the same as family yes. scientific names the same as scientific name and so on and so on and so on it's really the same on both sides okay. so I apparently did it right mm -hmm. which means everything in the photos table is now extraneous it's in the occurrence. Yeah. We don't need it in the photo. Yeah, it in fact, it's better to remove it from the photo because somebody might get confused and change something in the photo thinking that they're updating the occurrence, the occurrence. and it's only sitting here. And now it's not in agreement. Okay. So it should be removed from the photos table. Okay. Let's, go ahead. Let's do it. Boss says do it. So photos table, it looks like that right now. This takes bravery. It seems like we're throwing away data, but we're not. There's the photos table. No, Doesn't seem like much information, does it? Yeah. Because all the information is in the occurrence ID. So now let's connect the two so you can see them together. Okay. Then you'll be happier, I'm sure of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So to do that, we need to look at the structure of the occurrence table. Mm -hmm. And we need to actually one second. We need to look at the photos table and design it. And we need to tell it something about the occurrence ID. So the occurrence ID needs to link, let's see, one second. Now there's a better way to do this. There's a better way to do this. I'm going to add the two tables that comprise our database now. There's the plant labels, which is the occurrences, and then there are the photos. And I'm going to tell it that there's a relationship between the occurrence IDs on both sides. So occurrence ID on one side is related to the occurrence ID on the other side. And now we're going to do a database trick that says, hey database, I don't want you to allow these things to get out of sync with each other. They are locked with each other. And so I'm going to define the parameters of that lock 
by enforcing this thing called referential integrity. Okay? And that's all I'm going to do. With, uh, no, I'm, I'm actually going to choose all these things. I'm not going to explain why, but I'm going to do it for the moment. And then create it. It says, can't do that for you. Sorry, it's already open. I need to close it first. Okay, now I'll try again. Enforce referential integrity, do these two things, and create. Now it tells me there's no unique index found for the reference field of the primary table. Remember I talked about indexes? Index, yes. Our photos table doesn't have a primary key. It needs but, to have but, one. But since from the beginning, we, 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 we don't know where the photos are in our machine. If you are doing, if, if you But are they have a number. Right now they have a number. Okay. And the uh, number identifies them uniquely. Okay, okay. If you have the number, if you have the number, if somebody just enter it and the photos are not in, in your computer, how does it relate it? Right now it's only a digital record of the photo okay. that has a number 218, say. Okay. It's, the photograph is not sitting in that database. The photograph is sitting in a file somewhere. Yes. If we want to actually have the photograph available to us, mm -hmm. then we need to do some more. We need to say where is the photograph. We need to add a field to the photos table that says where can we find that photo. Oh, okay. Right now it's just telling us the photo number is 10. Okay. And that photo number is an identifier and it is a key. So. Let's go do what it's telling us we need to do. In the photos table, we will design it, and the photo number will be unique, right? Yes. So that will be the primary key on this side. Just want to check something here. Now, we also need a primary key in the occurrences table. That's what we created the occurrence ID for. So might as well do that. Let's set our occurrence ID to be a primary key. Okay, that's done. Now, hopefully it will be happy with us trying to put these two things together. You see how the database is being very strict. Now it allowed it. So for every one occurrence, there can be as many photos as you like. Yes. And they're related to each other. Now, having done that, my hope is that we can look at the plant label saying a database and see the photos that are associated with it. Now, if you're quite astute, you'll see that there was a little plus sign that ended up at the beginning. And that's a link to the photo for that record. But that one doesn't have a photo. All the ones with photos are down at the bottom with those high occurrence ID numbers. Let's go down there and see if we can find one that has a photo attached to it. That one has three photos. Yes. And if we had other data in that table, mm -hmm. the other data for the photos would be here, such as a URL to find the photo, to look at it. Anything else you wanted to add to the photos table would show here. So now we've created a relational database with two tables. Your photos are separated from your occurrences. Mm -hmm. You only need to update the latitudes and longitudes or names in the occurrence side and the photos get it for free. Okay. Okay, so now, how, from this point, how do we link now that, so that if somebody clicks on there and clicks this number, he sees the photo? They won't see the photo in this database. This database isn't equipped to display photographs. But let's put the photographs somewhere where they can be seen. Okay. Like Flickr or Picasso or, Picasso. or a website. Mm -hmm. And then we'll put the URL here. They click on the URL and see the photo in a web browser. Okay. Because yeah, your database doesn't hold the photograph. The photo, okay. The database holds the information about the photograph. About the photo. 
So we're only one step away. Put them on a website, on website. and add the data to the photos table. Mm -hmm. Then you have the link here. Okay. So is it is it possible to put those photos on a website? Sure. Then we'll go ahead. We'll see. Let's we'll see if I can do it. Okay. <laughs> There will be a little bit more work to do because we need to put the URLs on here. And a little bit more work still because those numbers are not in the file names. Right? Yeah. So that, there's actually some work that has to be done. A, li a little bit of work that has to be done first. Okay. 